Hey guys, in this new video I want to show you how to make a look dev in Karma XPU in Houdini and Solaris, so let's dive. So of course, like every other YouTube tutorials, you can get access to this project files and the project file from the previous tutorials to get access to the different uh, simulations and the Karma render setups. It supports the channels and it helps us to create some free contents for everyone. So don't forget to check the link in the description if you want to get access to the different files. So I have a very basic scenes in Houdini with four objects. So I have my main simulation here on the Geometry 2. And if you want to get access to the tutorial of the fluid simulation, you can check the previous tutorials. So here I split everything into different nulls and I've used those nulls to create different objects on the object levels. So I have one geometry container for the fluids, one for the tweezers, one for the lychee and one for the background. So this is very basic geometry container. In every container, I only have an object merge with a null link to the object one. Same for the tweezers, same, same for the lychee. And for the background, I've created a simple grid with UVs and normals. So now I can add a new LOP networks. So in that case, I can create a context for the rendering. So you can rename this one render. And here you can press C to change the color of this one and I will make it black. So now I can dive inside. So here we are in Solaris in the stage context and here you can change the template to Solaris and you also have the Solaris look dev but in my case I will use the Solaris one. So here the first thing is to import the different object in the stage context. So to do that you can use a node called SOP import and here you can press P to open the parameter. In that case you have a bit more space to deal with the node and the parameter. So here with the SOP pass you can select your different object from the object level. You can click on this and here you can go to the different object. So let's start by importing the fluid. Click on accept. And now you have the fluid on the Solaris. So now let's duplicate this SOP import. Now let's import the second object which is the lychee. Now let's import the next one which is the tweezers and let's import the background. So now you can select all those SOP import nodes and you can plug them into a merge. And now you can visualize the merge and you can see here on the left we have the different objects under the pass. So maybe you can create a subfolder to put every object at uh, one place. So here you can define a pass for every object and by default the pass is on $OS which is the name of the node. And here you can replace it with something like objects and then we can type um, for this one you can type fluids as it is a fluid object. And now you can copy this one with Ctrl C and you can paste it here and you can replace the name of the object by lychee as this is the lychee fruits and now you can paste it here for the tweezers and you can replace the name tweezers and we can do the same for the background so you can rename the fluid with background. So now if you select the merge you can see that we have a subfolder with an object as we have defined on the pass and here we have our four objects inside this subfolder. So now let's add a camera for the scenes as we need a camera for the rendering. So here you can um, visualize the camera and you can go to the camera view by going here and you can select the camera. It's named camera one by default. So here you can um, change the position and the rotation with the little settings here. So in my case, I will put the translate on the X axis to eight, on the Y axis to one, and I will change the rotation on the Y axis to 90 degrees. Most Houdini tutorials show you tricks. Very few teach you how to build real production ready setups from scratch. Arta Labs is a premium Houdini training platform for artists who want production level results used in motion design, simulations, and high-end product visuals. You get 45 plus hours of advanced content, including two complete courses where you build high-end animations from start to finish, exactly like in real client work. Every lesson includes full Houdini project files, so you're never guessing. You follow the exact workflow step by step. The library keeps growing every month. And right now, annual access is discounted with an extra 20% off for a limited time. Click the link below. Start building Houdini work that actually attracts professional clients. So now I can go to view and here I can increase the focal length to something like 85. And here by default, we have the aspect ratio on 16 by 9 and we can change that to 9 by 16. In that case, we have something perfect for social, social media and we, have, and we have a vertical version for the final wonder. So here for the camera, you can keep everything else by default. So now let's create the different materials. So in our case, as we have four objects on the scene, we need to create four materials. So let's add the materials library. So here you can dive inside and we can create four materials. So let's add a Karma Material Builder. So here for the first one, you can rename it Fluids. 
you can create a new one with alt and left click you can duplicate the materials here let's rename this one to lychee let's duplicate it one more time you can rename it backgrounds and let's add a new one but this time for the tweezers so now if you want you can add a random color for each individual materials just to see if it's correctly assigned to the different objects so let's dive into the first one let's choose the color and let's put this one to let's say red let's add a new color for the second one let's put this color to blue let's add a new color for the background let's put that to green and let's add a yellow color for the last one so now you can go back to the stage context and you can go to the material library node and you can click auto fill materials in that case it will fill the material vop with the material pass and make sure everything is correctly assigned and here you can assign the different materials here with the geometry pass so here you can drag and drop your object from the tree to the pass here for the geometry pass so for the fluid let's start by drag and drop the fluid object here now you can see it will put the red color on the fluid as we have set the material for the fluid in red so now let's do the same for the lychee let's drag and drop the lychee under the geometry pass let's do the same for the backgrounds and let's finish with the tweezers so now you can see that we have everything correctly assigned so now let's add a dome light just to get a preview of the different materials so let's add a new dome light and here for the dub light you can set a texture here on the texture path so in my case i will use the texture from hgri even and you can download multiple hgri on their website so now you can switch the view here from perspective to karma xpu in that case you can get a preview of the render and here if you want you can change the rotation of the dome light so in my case i will go to the transform node and i will put the rotate at 90 degrees so now we have a little preview of the objects so here we can disable the grid from the view and we can dive inside the material library in that case we can set different materials for every object so let's start with the fluid materials so here for the base color i will use something with very light orange so here i can put the u to something like 20. so here i can put the brightness to one and here for the saturation i can put the value to something like 0.25 just to get a very light orange tint and here for the specular i will decrease the roughness to something like 0.05 and here i will uh, just enable the subsurface for the fluids so here i will put the subsurface value to 0.5 and here for the base color i will put the u to something like 18 i will decrease the saturation to 0.1 and put this one to 1. so now for the radius i will um, make something a bit slightly darker and a bit more saturated so here for the u i will put the value to something like 10 i will put the saturation to 0.5 uh, 18 and i will um, decrease this one to 0.5 so now let's go back to the material library and let's dive in the background materials so for this one i will put a dark red colors so here for the settings of the color i will put the u to something like 355 here for the saturation i will put the value quite high so i will put um, something like 0.92 and here i will put the um, darkness to something like 0.065 and here for the specular value i will increase the roughness to 0.9 so now let's dive in the tweezers and here for the tweezers i will use two different materials so i will use one material for the base and this will be a metallic materials so you can select the base materials and for this one you can put um, the color to something like 0.2 so maybe you can take this and increase the value to 0.2 so in that case we have like a dark gray value here you can put the metalness to one and you can go to the specular value and you can maybe keep the roughness to 0.2 or if you want you can decrease it to something like 0.15 so i want to add a logo on my tweezers and i've placed my logo correctly with cups so here i can take the cups texture and use it as a blend value between two different materials so to do that i can go back to the object levels i can dive here and i can go to my cup net and here i have my logo so I can take this null and in my case it's called out mask so I can copy that with ctrl c and then I can go back to my lop network into my material library and into my tweezers so in that case I can add a new materials so you can copy and paste this one and now you can use this texture as a blend and here you can use a mix node so you can place this one to the background and this one to the foreground and you can plug that to the output of the materials and now let's add an image textures and here to look under the Houdini file you can type up to dot and you can paste the path of the nulls and you can put that to a float value so you can change that from color to float as this is a black and white textures we can use that as a mask so you can plug that to the mix value so here for this material we can change it and you can make it uh, dark so you can take the black colors 
And here you can put the roughness to something like one. So now we want to create some little line here and we can use a texture to create the displacements instead of doing that by the geometry. So I've set a different line with cops. So here I can copy and paste these uh, image textures. And here I can look under my cop net and I can take my out displacement textures. So here I can put the color space to row and here I can plug this one to the displacement uh, node. And here by default, the displacement is quite high. So you can reduce the scale to something like 0.02. So now I can add the textures as a bump map to add some little uh, brushed metal effect on the tweezers. So to do that, let's add a new image node. And now I can select this little icon to select my textures and I can go to dollar hip and dollar text. And I have these textures as a normal map. So you can select the textures and you can put the color space to row. And here you can plug that to a normal map node. And here you can plug the output of this node to the normal of the materials. So you can plug the out here on the normals. And by default, I think the value is a bit uh, strong. So here let's add a constant node. And here with a constant, you can uh, keep it on float and you can put that under the scale value. So here you can put the scale at something like 0.5. So now we have a base material for the tweezers. We can dive in the last material, which is the lychee materials. So let's go back to the material library and we can dive into the last materials. So for this material, I will use some texture from my scans. So here let's add a first image texture node. So for the first one, we can take the diffuse textures. So I can go to this icon and under dollar heap, I have a text folder and I have a subfolder for the lychee textures. And here for the first one, I can take the diffuse. So here for the color space, you can put that to sRGB and then you can plug the color to the base color. Then we can copy and paste this node this time to add the roughness value. So here you can select the uh, roughness map and you can put that to row. And then you can add a ramp constant. And here you can plug, th plug that to the speculars and you can plug that to the specular roughness. So here with the ramp, you can tweak the value a bit if you want to get something a bit more or less shiny. So in my case, I will put the black value to something like. So now let's add the texture, but this time for the normals. So let's add the normal map and you can take this one for the normals. So now let's take the normal map into the lychee folder and you can take the normal map from here. So let's add uh, color space to row and you can plug that to the geometry normals. So take the output of the normal and plug it here. And now we need the last one, but this time for the displacement. So you can copy and paste this uh, image textures. And now you can take the um, displacement map and you can keep that to row. And then you can add the remap node and here with the remap, you can remap it from 0 to 1 to minus 0.5 to 0.5. So you can put the minimum value to minus 0.5 and the maximum value to 0.5. And then you can plug that to the displacement node. And here by default, the displacement is quite strong. So you can decrease the scale to something like 0.05. So that's pretty much it for the different materials. So now we can dive into the lightning setup. So you can go back to the stage context. And now you can add a merge node. And here with the merge, you can plug the material library here and you can visualize the render. In that case, we don't have any light on the scenes. So let's add a new light and you can plug the first light here on the merge and you can change the light type from points to rectangles. And here for the textures, I will use a texture from a softbox. And on the website, we have multiple textures to simulate real softbox. And those are all HDR um, files. So you can download them on the website if you want. So in my case, I will select one of my favorites. So under dollar hip and text folder, I have my textures, which is square softbox 0.4. So this is one of my favorite I use all the time. And you can download it from the website if you want. So here to place the light correctly, you have a very nice function to place the light based on the specular diffuse or even shadows. So in my case, for this one, I will place it based on the specular so you can uh, change the placement mode to specular and here you can click on the tweezers to place the light to get some nice reflection here on the object and with control and left click you can adjust the light distance so let's make it something like here and then you can uh, also change the width and the height of the light so for this one i think i will put the width to something like three and the eight to five and then i can decrease the intensity back to 300 something like this and of course you can change the light position uh, later so now let's add a new light and for this second light, you can plug it into the merge. And then you can uh, take the specular placement and you can place the light to maybe something like here. So for this second light, I will uh, keep the same textures and I will put the intensity around 300. And here for the width and the height, I will uh, put the width to 5 
uh, 0.5 and the height to something like 3.5 and then I can change the position of the lights of course you can change it uh, at any time on the 3D space and here for the light position you can select specular and here you can place it correctly for the background and for this light you can change the width to something quite low so you can put the value at around 2.5 and you can increase the height to something like 7 in that case we have something nice and now you can dive into the 3D view and you can place all the light correctly so here for this one you can make it to something like here and if you want you can switch from local view to global view by pressing M two times and in that case you can place it in the uh, global view so here if you want you can split the screen uh, in two parts so on the part here you can go to the camera view and here for this part you can go to the perspective and you can change the light positions so in that case you can get a preview in real time so you can take this second light and you can place it in the viewport like this uh, so maybe we can change the rotation to something like this and here we can change it in that way so we need to get a nice contrast for the um, object so maybe we can put this light like this in that case we have quite a nice contrast here and for the first light we can make it like this just to decrease intensity on the tweezers and maybe you can get some better contrast over everything and you can adjust the height position of the light to something like this and you can change some rotation if you want so i think it's not bad maybe we can add a bit of contrast of the last light and here you can change the position of this one to make it closer to the background so you can press m two time and you can make it like this and here you can change the, trans the rotation slightly so maybe you can select the second light and you can increase the width just a bit to something like this and you can increase the intensity to 350 and you can decrease the intensity of this one to something like 200 and I think it's a bit better for the global lightness of the tweezers. So I think something like this works in our case so you can go back to single view one more time and here to stop the render you can press shift and P in that case it will stop the render. So now let's add a karma setup and you can plug the merge to the first input. And here for the camera settings, you can um, switch that to Karma XPU. And here for the resolution, you can set it as you want. But in my case, I will put 1080 by 1920. So in that case, I have nice vertical results. And here for the paste trace sample, you can increase the value to something like 256 or even 512. Here under image output, you can set your AOVs if you want. So you can go to diffuse. Uh, you can maybe select combine diffuse. For reflection and refraction, you can select combine glossy reflections and you can set the pass for SSS. So I think that pretty much it for the render settings. So now we can dive in the last node and here you can uh, set the frame range you want to render for the final sequence. So if you want, you can uh, set a specific frame range or you can select one and single frame by selecting current frame range. So uh, this is up to you. And here on the camera render settings, you can also define a path where you want to render your frame. So maybe you can select a subfolder uh, next to the dollar $heap called render. And here you can create one more subfolder for the ratio. So you can call it 916. And in that case, you can create some subfolder between different formats if you want. And here on the last node, you can press render to this to render this final frame. So that's it for today guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know if you want to see more Karma XPU tutorials on the channel in the future, I'll see you in the next one, bye bye. That's it for today guys, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check artivoxar.com to get premium 3D resources. You can access to this project file with our Artifiles membership, see you in the next one, bye.